We're gonna make liquid culture. Pretty simple process. One cup of water, two ta uh, teaspoons of honey. So it doesn't look like it's very much, but it's actually gonna make, we just use little droplets out of here to, uh, to inoculate grains. So this is actually gonna stretch a really long ways. If you wanted to double the amount of liquid culture you're gonna make, you just do two, two cups of water and then two additional tablespoons, or uh, excuse me, teaspoons of honey. Any honey is fine, it doesn't matter what kind of honey, it's just that's what the, uh, the honey is what the mycelium munches on when it starts, uh, once we put the mic in there to start eating. Last thing we wanna do is put the stirrer in there. If you don't have a stirrer, it's okay. Um, you can actually just make the liquid culture and then stir it by hand once a day, just, just stir it around. Um, but for 30 bucks, you can get a little stir that, get, that uh, you drop this into. It's got a magnetic stir on the bottom of it. So this will spin inside of the, inside the water and keep it stirring around, which helps the mycelium form faster. It keeps breaking it apart into little pieces. So from there, we're just gonna put a, cut, a lid on here. Again, we're gonna have a uh, quarter inch hole with some polyfill in there. Um, we're gonna pressure cook this at 15 PSI for 30 minutes. If you read online, it says to do it for 15 to 20 minutes. Um, and the reason they say to stop at 15 to 20 is because it breaks down the honey. Uh, I've, I've always pressure cooked mine at 30 minutes and I've never had any issues with the honey breaking or with the honey breaking down and it being an, an issue for the mycelium. Mycelium still eats it just fine. Um, never had any issues. So do 30 minutes, that way you make sure you don't have any contaminant in there. So from here, we wanna put our uh, honey into the pressure cooker. Make sure we have enough water. Again, you can kind of see where the water level's out there. It's just about kind of almost halfway up the jar. This is only gonna be in the, in the uh, pressure cooker for 30 minutes plus 15 minutes to boil off. So only a total of 45 minutes. So not that much water is gonna run off. Okay, we'll wait for that to build pressure, and then once it does, we'll, uh, I'll show you the process from there. Okay, so our pressure cooker has just come up to pressure. See our little pop up there. It's kind of hard to see in the picture, but it's actually popped up. You try to open this pan right now, you could. You're opening the top right now, you couldn't because that pan is actually popped up through the corner of the So we're going to let this steam off for 15 minutes. So we'll come back in, uh, at 5.48. And we'll uh, put the 15 pound rocker on there, build it up to pressure, and then we'll let it pressure cook at 15 PSI for 30 minutes. Okay, we're at 15 minutes. We can put the rocker on. We'll let that build up to pressure and start knocking. As soon as it does, we'll turn the heat down, just maintain pressure. Once we got that pressure maintained, we're going to let it go for 30 minutes, and then we'll shut it down. Okay, you can see that we've built pressure. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the burner down to about three. I'm looking for that rocker to just barely go back and forth. Just, just enough in there to tell me there's 15 pounds of pressure inside and just a little bit trying to get out. And then we're letting it go for uh, 30 minutes. So we're going to come back and pull this off at uh, six or, yeah, 619. Okay, it's been 30 minutes. Now I'm just going to turn the, uh, turn the heat off and I'll let this, the pressure come off there by itself. If I wanted to speed it up, I could take the knocker off and uh, let the steam blow off that way, but it's pretty loud. Um, otherwise, as soon as the liquid culture is, is uh, cool enough to handle, you can take it out of the pressure cooker and then wait for it to come all the way down to room temperature before you inoculate. Okay, today we're gonna inoculate liquid culture. So we're gonna start with getting everything cleaned up. Get all these surfaces cleaned down.
get everything clean, but I'm not gonna be setting anything down here on this surface. I'm really concerned about getting this surface up here clean, this shelf clean. Anything down here, I'm just doing this as a precaution, but I don't plan to set anything down here on the surface. sterilize the tip of that. I'm not just going to use alcohol there. And nothing inside of this pressure cooker has been exposed to the air, so it's still sterile inside. And this is all completely sterile, so I'm not gonna. I'm not worried about recleaning that. I just want to make sure my hands are sterile now. If this had not been sterile, if this was sitting outside of the flow hood or hadn't just been hadn't just come out of the pressure cooker, you'd want to spray this down completely, wipe it down before you handle this. Let's see. I like to loosen that lid before I start doing my work. I'm not gonna take it off yet. I'm just gonna loosen it so it's real easy for me to get to or for me to take off because once I'm, uh, I start the process of handling the agar, it's a little bit, a little bit tougher. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead. Actually, before I do that, I need to remove the paraffin tape. induction sterilizer. If you don't have an induction sterilizer, you just want to use a, uh, a big lighter or whatever and uh, flame sterilize the tip. You just want to, you want to get it red hot. This is taking a little bit longer, but I think it's because I had some alcohol in here. Usually this steams up right away. see if that was that was red hot or not but it was so what I'm gonna do is take this plate off turn this upside down handle this I want to keep the agar as close to that flow hood as possible so I'm just getting clean air across here while I'm handling this I'm just gonna cut a little piece of that agar out recover the uh oh well, didn't do that very well I'm gonna have to come back and re-sterilize that I'm gonna drop this agar right inside there. And that's all there is to inoculating liquid culture. Now for how to handle this. So it landed, the lid landed right side or upside down. So the part that's gonna be facing the agar is up here. So it didn't actually get exposed to anything down here. I'd already cleaned this anyways. So by all theories, you know, for all intents and purposes, it should be fine, but I'm gonna go ahead just to be sure. I'll put some alcohol in there, and I'm gonna let this upside down. I'm gonna let that dry out. And then I'll put the lid back on the agar. For now, I'm just gonna leave the, the flow bit on 
so I don't have any dirty uh, contaminants land on top of my adbar. Put the tin foil back on there. And then this has got a stirrer in it, so I'm going to put this on top of a, uh, I have a magnetic stirrer that I put on, put this on top of, and it'll actually stir this little stirrer around so it'll keep the mycelium moving all the time. If you don't have a stirrer, then what you want to do is uh, just come in, you know, twice a day and just give it a, give it a shake. So that, so the agar inside there, so that mycelium breaks apart, moves around and feeds on the, uh, on the honey water that we have inside of liquid culture. If you have a stirrer in there, it'll actually make this process go a little faster. If you don't have the stirrer and you have to do it every you know, couple times a day, just stir it. Uh, it'll take a little bit longer, but still in you know uh, four or five days with a stirrer, this is ready. In six, seven, eight days, if you don't stir it, it's, it'll still have enough mycelium to get it going uh, if you have to hand stir it. Okay, here's a picture of what the stirrer looks like, or here's a, here's a video of the stirrer. So I just set this on here. There's a magnetic stirrer underneath here. Um, I would turn the, turn the dial and you can kind of see it spinning up. The speed you're looking for is you can kind of, yeah, you can see that there's a, like a funnel going all the way down to the bottom. That's a little too fast. You want that funnel to be right up towards the top. Just keep things moving. It doesn't have to be super fast. And if you can see that, that's about the speed you're looking for. So if you end up having a stirrer and you can do this, um, this stirrer only costs, I think, 24 bucks. And the little magnetic stirrer that comes inside, you can pick them up, like, I think eight of them for uh, maybe four or $5. So this is a pretty, uh, this is a pretty cheap, simple way to, to get liquid culture. And it, this really does speed up the process if you can keep it spinning all the time.